St Mary's Catholic Primary School in Birmingham. Earlier in the year we visited the school to observe a year two science lesson to see how primary science is taught and more importantly how children learn. In every class there's a huge range of children who learn in different ways yet teachers have to find the key to each of them to help their learning. We followed Scarlett as she made her way through a science lesson on plants and the parts we can eat. Year two teacher Veronica Knight and deputy head and science coordinator John Blaney have invited Jane Turner from the East of England Science Learning Centre to review and discuss the lesson. It was a real treat in that film to watch Scarlett closely. I learnt a lot about her just through watching it. Perhaps you'd like to tell me a bit about the sort of learner you feel Scarlett is, obviously through your knowledge. Mm. Well, she is very much a kinesthetic learner and, and I've always known that, but it came out much more strongly in that programme where she used all of her senses. Mm -hmm. um, by the end of the lesson, she had learned most of her science through um, touching, feeling, mm. smelling, tasting. Those were lovely shots where she's feeling the seeds coming through her fingers. They're little, they're like rain. It's, that was a lovely image. When she took the carrot and used it as a microphone, when she <laughs> threw the lettuce up and down. That's her making sense of it in her way, and that's a, mm -hmm. you know, that's a real stage children go through, isn't it? And lots of young children are very touchy-feely learners. And as science coordinator, John, how do you want children to behave like scientists, or how do you, how do you plan for them to behave like scientists? I think it's important to get hands-on as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You should start with curiosity and mm -hmm. good questions, really. I think they should be um, curious about the material that they're working with um, and want them to explore and inquire. What part of the and is what it? Year 2 did on this occasion, they had a very kinesthetic experience. It really built on Scott's strengths, really, as a learner. So when do you yeah. think you saw Scarlett behaving like a scientist in that lesson? Well, I think the time when she went off with the magnifying glass, completely mm. unprompted, uh, it was break time, and um, she chose to go and pick up the magnifying glass and went round mm. yeah. diff mm. quite a few different things, mm. um, looking very closely, mm. observing very yeah. closely, and I was very impressed yeah. by that. And what she's learnt in this lesson is it's important to look closely as it is to know that this is a root and this is a leaf. You know, that mm. was a really important right. scientific step yes, for her. And, yes. and suddenly she was seeing a magnifying glass for the first time as a useful tool in that respect. Right, now, first of all, I want you to have a look at this picture of a plant. I, I realise that as a teacher, um, I, things can always be improved. Um, is there any other way we could get the children to learn you know, more, more actively? Do you have any suggestions for yeah, us? I think, particularly let's think about Scarlet. It would have been nice if, rather than using the diagram, you'd started with the fruit and vegetables, mm -hmm. or a plant, rather than the diagram. Mm -hmm. She's a very visual, kinesthetic mm -hmm. learner. She needs to see. So that would have been a really nice start. Those are the flower buds. They're very tight now. But if this broccoli was left growing in the ground, the flowers would open out and they'd be yellow. I, I did pick up that even by the end of the lesson, there were some of the fruits and vegetables that some of the children weren't certain about. Mm. Well, it's all the white bit on the bottom there. Scarlett says at one point, when they look, they're looking at the crest, what, what do we think these bits are? And, and she says, oh, they're the roots, and then she says, oh, they're wet. And that's, in a way, the time to say, well, why would they be wet? You know, why are they wet? And the leaves aren't wet, or the, you know, would the flowers yes, be wet? And, and there were no prompts at all. No. You know, she, she just came out with that herself. Yeah, yes, she did. Go on then, talk them up. That's a good idea. Ronica, perhaps you could talk to me about the salad group, how you plan that activity and how you organised who would do what. Well, I thought for that particular group, it would be good if they had a purpose to the sorting and that they would have a finished product at the end. Can you talk mine? No. A salad is something that all of those children would be familiar with. Right. Looking at it from her perspective all the time, you can just feel that, mm. Mm, well, maybe she could have been mm. a little bit more included or engaged mm. in, it, in the activities. Mm. Who can tell me what this word is? But actually, she couldn't see the board where the writing was on, you know, which is a lesson to us all, but we're not aware sometimes what children are perceiving in the classroom. 
they made interesting choices. You know, I'm not sure I've ever had a broccoli and strawberry salad. Um, <laughs> just, um, and I like the way you let them do that. That yes. was really important that they had the freedom to make their own mm -hmm. choice. Yes, I thought if she had been given one of the other parts mm. to find, the stem or the flower or the leaves, possibly she might have got a little bit more out of it. She was watching very carefully what the other children were doing yes, and, she was. and interacting with the other children yeah. as well. And looking for that affirmation from the classroom assistant, you know, smell this, look at this. That's right. You know, yes. lovely. Yes. You know, keen and excited about what she'd discovered. Mm -hmm. I thought she showed, mm. you know, really interesting with the onions. Well, let's sniff them and then let's look at them and, oh, fantastic Open skills. Opening yes. up. Yeah. Look, look what's inside. Plastic. It's, it's not plastic. plastic. It's so sticky. And it's just by looking closely and perhaps exploring a bit more than you would normally, mm. you make the familiar fascinating. Yeah, experience. but it'd be nice for Scott to see there's a bigger seed there yes. in the classroom. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you couldn't pierce a hole into the side mm -hmm. of the coconut, you could sniff that and, oh, this smells great. Yes. And why is that? It's very evident from the film that there's a lot of question goes on in science lessons, the questions that are child-led and questions that are teacher-led. I think one, one big question about the whole thing is, how would you get from that little seed mm. into, say, the oak tree? Yeah, yeah acorns amazing to oak question. trees. She's doing the mass of the, yeah. the, lettuce. the lettuce. How do you get that little mass into tons and tons and tons mm. of material? Yes. How does that work? Children can cope really well with big questions. You know, why is a seed a seed? And mm. pumpkin seeds, yes. a tiny little pumpkin seed, yeah. and this enormous, yeah. heavy mm. plant that you can't even lift. I mean, just how does that yeah. happen? She's saying, mm. these seeds don't smell. Mm. Well, what nice question would have been, Mm. Which part of the plant yeah, does smell and, exactly. why does it smell and why does it smell? We want the children to ask questions themselves, really, because mm. if they're their questions, then they'll want to know the answers. Often we ask children to tell us three things they've noticed about something, but actually to get them to say, can you come up with a question? What would you like to know about this? They did their drawing with pencil, didn't they? Yes. And for, for some of the children in your class, I think we could have had paint and we could have had printing and we could have had peeling the skin off and, you know, just be a bit more um, brave with your media. I know we sort of tend to think of that sort of printing with vegetables as, as playgroup nursery stuff, but actually to print with vegetables is a really interesting way of looking at the yes, texture of the see. surface mm. yeah. and yeah. to get them to look closely. That's something I'd not considered, but... That yeah. Yeah. Perhaps you'd like to tell me about the sorting exercise with the box, how you arranged that and what the purpose was. Uh, well, I, I wanted to give the children the freedom to look at all the fruits and vegetables and to make their own choices and then to decide which category they would put them in, which part of the plant it was. There was already a lettuce, although mm -hmm. it was a different kind of lettuce in, the, in mm. one box. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's where she got her cue from yeah. there, that she put it in with the leaves. Mm. But that gave her confidence to approach right. something which was totally unfamiliar. Mm. And then have to make quite a tricky decision about where that should go. It was encouraging to see them working so well independently and talking to each other in such an informed and questioning way. I, I like that. And using each other to help each other out. I was particularly pleased with Scarlett when she was asking Finn what did he think that fruit was. Yes. She obviously had no idea mm. um, and she asked him and, and um, he, he didn't have any idea either but she, you know, she was quite happy then to go and ask someone else and she was asking me what it was. Yeah. What's inside it? Okay, and what do you think it might be? Um, I don't know. Any ideas? Have you ever seen one before? No. Maybe. Right, should we have a look? Maybe a seed? because she'd been looking at it carefully and she'd been feeling it, mm -hmm. um, and she realised that there were petals there, mm -hmm. although they were dried, and she, you know, she obviously knew that flowers had petals, mm. and I think yeah, and she was quite confidently, although she, she hesitated to start with, mm. but I think then she quite confidently popped it in the flower yeah. box. But then also recognised that there were seeds inside That's it, right. so actually it was a fruit, yes. a sort of seed container, she did that beautifully. If Scarlett had made the decision about how to sort those fruit and vegetables, I wonder whether there would have been a different categorisation. Because that was set by mm. you, obviously, mm -hmm. as your learning objective. But Scarlett was picking up on different things, wasn't she? Texture, weight. And I wonder if you ever give them that 
op more mm. open-ended th approach. I, th I think in a way, though, they need a, a, bit, a bit of scaffolding down the school in year two, and they need some guidance on, on categories and so on. Don't be frightened by the learning objective. Don't use it as a limit. Use it as a start, really. They learn best when something matters to them. Mm. And I'm very keen that children do have that chance to say, well, this matters to me. And for Scarlett, the texture mattered and the weight. And I sometimes think if we give them that freedom to say, well, I'd like to sort them this way, because I think that's how we divide these up, mm. then the teacher's role is to intervene at the stage which says, well, that's a really good way, but does that help us to understand what the plants mm are doing and how plants okay. grow and then yes. the next stage is mm. but I, I do sometimes think it's quite nice to let children make those decisions for themselves that the learning that is most significant is the learning that's incidental not mm. the stuff that we necessarily plan mm. for but mm. the stuff that happens and is directed by the children's own interest mm. okay. I make some of those at home Scarlett I'd have them for my pudding You have worked really hard this morning, well done. And I think we've had a few surprises. Some of the things that you've been looking at <coughs> could have gone into two of these groups. Some children started looking this morning and were looking in some... How books. might you uh, plan another lesson or a similar lesson to fit her more preferred learning style? I think I would have some kind of open-ended activity um, which the children could choose to do or not to do. I think she needs to have something else that she can go and explore in her own way. Mm -hmm. We can see that actually she's a very self-motivated child and yes. a very eager learner. She is. And has mm -hmm. lots of own, her own questions and her own curiosity mm -hmm. and it's giving her the chance to explore that. Maybe um, just a little investigations corner, maybe mm. if there's a theme, in your, you know, for the mm. week or mm. for mm -hmm. the topic. One thing that we should really extend towards is uh, the school garden yeah. and uh, take an opportunity to do a bit of planting outside the yes, classroom yes. so you can walk out, tend to the, yeah. the seedling, yeah. bring them back into the classroom, yes. wash them, eat yeah. them. Very lovely. You want to get the children in a frame that they will talk together and, you know, who's heard a good question today, who's asked a good question today? and get them to talk to each other and just set mm. things up in a problematic way. Mm. So when they come in, they think, why is that like that? What's going on here? It doesn't matter that the teacher can't answer them necessarily. No, not mm. at all. And it's really important to say, you know, science is quite tentative. We don't always know the answer. Mm. And what mm. we're doing, the scientific process is finding out. And that's the important bit, really. Is this a fruit or is it a flower? Is it a seed? Mm. You know, well, what makes us make that decision? Why are you telling me that? We're not looking for a right answer, we're looking for a reason, we're looking for an opinion, we're looking for you to, it, to you know, view the evidence. In your experience, does that feed into other areas of the curriculum? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's problem solving, mm -hmm. so it fits with maths, it fits mm -hmm. with thinking skills. We look for historical evidence to support why something might have happened, geographical data. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a really, really crucial skill, and that's why I think science is so fundamental to the primary curriculum, because it's the one area where we really concentrate on a process. Yes. more than any other. Mm. We're training mm. children or asking children to become thinkers and that's really, really important and it has an impact on the whole of the rest of the curriculum.